welcome to your weekday cup of the word. We're here in chapter 8 of the book of Job, and now Job's second friend, Bildad, is going to chime in. So Eliphaz has already spoken, and now Bildad's going to speak, and Bildad's going to take a slightly different tack. Now, all of Job's friends are going to have the same argument. Job, you are not as good a guy as you think you are. And it kind of puts Job in a tough predicament, because the more Job says, I'm a righteous man, the more they're going to argue, see, you're proud. Um, and, and so it's going to be the unwinnable argument uh, for Job, because no matter what he says, they're going to take it as a false sense of righteousness. But Bildad, instead of using Eliphaz's argument, he's going to say, Job, you just know, look at history. You're, you're a smart guy. Look at history. As you look through the history of mankind, what has God always done? God has always taken the wicked and punished them. That's what God does in history. They're the ones who suffer. So as you go through all history and you look at nations and you look at people and you look at the history books of, of how God interacts with mankind, you see a common theme that God has vengeance upon the wicked. Now this is true. Once again, this is the reason this is a good false argument is there's a kernel of truth to it. God does reap vengeance upon the wicked. Historically, you look at it, and righteous nations God blesses, and wicked nations He curses. But here's the problem. That's on a large scale. When you begin to look at individual people, it is not always that way. So yes, there is a general principle that is true that suffering, you are much more likely to suffer for doing wrong than you are for doing right. But it does not hold true that all bad people suffer and all good people don't suffer. We see cases all the time of bad people who have their lives turn out pretty decently and good people who have their lives turn out kind of crummy. And so Bildad brings this argument that talks about a principle, which is true in a lot of cases, but he says, see, that proves it has to be that way with, with you, Joe. But that's simply not true. It once again is a flawed argument. And all it's doing is continuing to poke at Job and say, see, Job, you're not a good guy. Well, that's not the kind of comfort that Job needs. And as his friends continue to do this, you're going to see Job get riled up. And uh, in the, the next chapter, as you look at his reply, you're going to see that Job is, is beginning to be very frustrated uh, with these kinds of arguments that his supposed comforting friends are giving him. That's your Daily Cup, and we'll see you tomorrow.